Hello there fellow Grobic TV viewers. The cold time of the year has arrived and for me this is always the time to learn something new. I've already bought some books but this time I'm going to try and teach you something too. And well yeah, I'll try addressing the Wiremod CPU in this uh, series of tutorials. I'll handle the basic features and I'll try and also uh, handle some of the advanced features. Well, I think I'll begin with um, the requirements you need to fulfill for participating in this tutorial. Well, first of all, of course, you need to own Gmod. Then uh, you should already have some experience with Gmod in general and, of course, Wiremod, because the CPU itself can do little on its own. Um, however, the CPU always had some prejudices connected with it and I think I'll address some of these prejudices first. First of all, the scripting language is different, yes, but not difficult to, le to, difficult to learn. As always, the advanced features require some time to get used to, but the bare basics are uh, very easy to learn and you will spend, I don't know, half a day m in maximum uh, and you will create your first productive programs. Then I've already heard that some really believe, that some of you really believe uh, that, I don't know, the CPU involves writing hex code and zeros and binary code and I don't know, nothing of this is true. The CPU of Wiremod, the Z CPU by the way, is programmed with an easy assembly language. Well, yeah, easy is relative. If you're used to some other programming languages that don't work uh, with directly with the hardware, you'll take some time, uh, it will take some time to get used to the new features. Well, um, yeah, and this uh, part of the tutorial I'll handle some theory that you will need to understand the, CP the features of the CPU. So if you wish to skip this, uh, you will have to research the um, things I'm about to explain for yourself, because otherwise you'll run into trouble understanding s the stuff I will explain in the scripting tutorials. So let's begin, shall we? Yeah, over there. Well, I've prepared a little um, yeah experiment, uh, and I'll try to uh, explain how the CPU works in general. Um, if you've already worked with CPUs in real life or in Wiremod, of course I'm not going to uh, go in depth how the hardware works. And I just want to uh, fulfill the requirements uh, that you will need to learn the scripting language. So please excuse any mistakes or uh, stuff I uh, let out because some of this feature, these features are either not present in the Wiremod CPU or they are too complicated to uh, explain without actually uh, executing them. So yeah. Most of the scripting languages uh, have variables. Well, these are just uh, values of course. Uh, let's say we got the variable um, gray box one. And we want to save the this can into the variable. Then we t tell the interpreter of the scripting language that we are about to use this thing. Then uh, we grab, let's say, can1 and put it in there. In Gmod, that would, uh, in for expression, exp for example, expression 2, sorry, this would translate out to, let's say, gray box 1 equals can1. Uh, however, the CPU works similar, but we are not dealing with variables uh, which uh, to which memory is assigned automatically. But we will... Ah, uh, uh, come on. 
well, I don't care. But uh, the CPU uh, works with memory. So, yeah. If you create a new CPU, first of all, uh, the code we uh, you put into the compiler, and yes, the code of the CPU is compiled into binary, that's why it's so um, abnormally fast. Um, some of this uh, memory the CPU has, uh, it's 64 kilobytes by the way, which uh, translates out to uh, 65,536 memory spaces that can be used by you or the CPU. Well, yes, or the CPU. The CPU is going to put the program code into uh, this, its internal memory. That's why we you are not able to use all uh, 50, uh, 64 uh, kilobytes of the memory that it provides. Instead, let's say the gray boxes are uh, filled with your program. Of course, firstly compi compiled into binary code. And, uh, well, yeah, let's just assume that uh, those gray boxes are all full. And, uh, well, I might as well fill them up now. Um, well, yeah, so this, uh, these gray boxes are full and may not be used. Of course, you may, uh, yeah, alter them, but it will result in undesired uh, result. I don't know if the ZCPU allows it, but uh, let me let me spawn some additional cans. Uh, but however, uh, in real life, CPUs are not pleased with their programs being uh, deleted. Um, that's why you will usually try to store, try to either f uh, take free storage, such as these yellow uh, chests, or uh, put additional RAM, indicated by the three red baskets, um, that is uh, completely up to you how you use it, because it will not be filled with anything. Um, well, yeah, this RAM is external, that means the memory that it has will not be uh, provided by the CPU, it's just like in real life. Okay. So, uh, in each of these baskets we can uh, save one byte, because they're one byte big. Uh, that is enough for most integers that uh, are, uh, well, yeah, uh, unsigned and undotted numbers. 